If we asked you how old you are, you would know in an instant because you have a birthday. But what if you didn't have that information? How would we know what your age is? Well, biological age is a way of determining that. And it is influenced by many factors in the way we live our lives. One of the most important is what you put in your mouth to fuel your body. In this video, we are going to talk about how your diet is impacting your biological age. So biological age versus chronological age. Everybody knows what chronological age, that is the years that you've been alive. Um, interesting fact, I know somebody who was born on uh, February 29th. He's actually only 17 years old at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. um, but biological age is something different that actually looks at kind of how we are aging. So um, over the years, there's been a number of different methods that have been proposed to do this. And I'm going to refer to my notes because there's a lot of stuff to read and I can't remember it all. Uh, so some of the Is methods include, yeah, <laughs> my chronological age. <laughs> right. um, so some of the methods include multiple linear regression, principal component analysis, Hothschild method, and the Clamera and Duval's method. So if you can remember all that and figure it all that out, that'd be great. Um, so the first two, MLR and PCA, use chronological age as a factor, while the other two use chronological age as an independent variable. Now, I read this paper several times. I could not really figure out what the difference of using one as a factor and one as an independent variable meant. Okay. But chronological age obviously has to be... Yeah. You know, you have it to has have to be in there somewhere, right? Point. Yeah, you've got to have a reference point. Right. If you're 10 years, your biological age is 10 years younger, then it's 10 years younger than what? Right. right? So you're chronological. Yeah. yeah, you kind of got to figure that one out. Um, now, chronological age is not a very good predictor of aging, though, right? Because there's so much variability yeah. between people. And we've oh, all yes. seen people who, the same age, um, mm -hmm. one looks 10 years older than the other or 10 years younger, vice versa. Uh, and then the person who comes to mind to me is Helen Mirren, the actress. Oh, yeah. She's like 75 years oh, old yeah. and she I'm looks like fantastic. Striving. Yeah, I'm striving for that one. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. looks great. But you can see somebody who's 20 years younger than that and just look old and decrepit. So, and there's a lot of factors that go into that, obviously. Yeah. Uh, now, there are some other me measures of aging as well that they use um, in different ways in, in science and research. Cognitive age, you know, how your mind is working. Uh, physical fitness age. Um, I think of Jack LaLanne, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, always comes, you know, my hero. Uh, perceived age, work ability index, frailty index. We're hearing a lot more about frailty index, you know, lately too, because these factors all have to do with being able to predict the onset of disease mm -hmm. and looking at quality of life, especially with the elderly. So the frailty index, we've talked a little bit about how important it is to keep muscle mass and especially yeah. lower body muscle mass. Um, as you get as you age, because when you lose that, you become more frail. You your your aging really starts to advance rapidly. Yeah, that seemed to be a very significant part, uh, and uh, and exercise certainly helped with biological age, but specifically weight training, m resistance exercises, keeping that muscle in your body was a significant factor. Right, right. Um, so there's been some new research into DNA and telomere length as a measure of aging. Right. Telomeres. So uh, that's a big word, but it's it's um, usually uh, used to describe the the like kind of like an aglet on your uh, of a shoelace. Uh, they're actually protective little caps on the ends of our chromosomes. What they truly are is uh, just repetitive uh, sequences of DNA nucleotides, which are like the building blocks of of DNA. Their purpose is to protect the chromosome from unraveling, to put it simply, uh, kind of meshing up and mixing each other up. And, and also they protect us against environmental uh, poisons and, and hazards that we have in us. But the thing about these telomeres that they've found is that the length of the telomere acts as a very good biomarker for aging. Right. So you want longer telomere uh, for the most part. Right. So telomeres shorten a little bit every time a cell divides. So as we get older and older and we've made so many, so many divisions of that cell, they get shorter and shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same rate though across the board. Some organs you know, and different tissues in the body will have different rates of that shortening as well. So here's a big question. Does what we eat affect our telomeres? Right. right? So I couldn't find a lot of stuff on low carb keto, but did find a very interesting study that looked at high sugar beverage intake and telomere length. And I'm gonna read this and because it's some pretty interesting quotes from this study. So 
A study that looked at telomere length and high sugar beverage intake uh, had some very interesting results. Uh, there were some other variables, of course, but here's the first quote from the study is, as expected, age was linearly associated with shorter telomeres, just like what we said. Mm -hmm. Mean telomere length was longest in blacks and Hispanics, in never smokers, and in normal weight adults. Yeah. So there, there are populations who naturally have those longer you know, telomere lengths. Mm -hmm. um, so the results... Each daily eight ounce serving of sugar sweetened soda was linearly associated with shorter telomeres, roughly equivalent to 1.9 additional years of aging, independent of sociodemographic characteristics and health related variables. That means just the soda, right. just having yeah. one small eight, yeah, ounce eight ounces soda that's per day. Not, yeah, do they right? even sell those? Yeah. yeah. It is going to increase you know, your aging, your biological aging. So, get that for a daily 20 ounce serving which is the current standard serving size and again this is one daily 20 ounce serving right. um it translates into an approximately 4.6 additional years of aging so you know how many people are down in a number of yeah. you know sodas yeah and according to this shortening their lives now it might not matter to you when you're you know 19 years old but it'll matter to you when you're 59 right. years old so can we make any assumptions of that you know right towards the kind of diet that we do, a low carb right. or keto diet. Right. Um, and unfortunately, there's not any research I could find that's really specific to that style of eating. Everything seemed to be the wrong combinations of things, right? It was processed meat and red meat. Well, right. and we know that it's, processed foods mm -hmm. are gonna you know, right. do that. Or it was saturated fat and refined grains. You know, right. and, you know again, you know, it, it just nothing specific out there. Mm -hmm. But we do know that the, you know, that the one thing across the board the first thing that you do, actually, when you're going to do a low-carb keto diet, is you drop the sugar. Right? Yeah, zero sugar. Zero right? sugar. You know, we're we're focusing on low-carb and keto because that's what we focus on on, on our channel. Um, you can certainly say, you know, even a vegetarian diet, uh, any well-formulated diet is going to cut out sugar because sugar's the sugar's the biggest nemesis of it, of right. anyone who's trying to get get healthy and, and lose weight. But I will say though that there are other other factors right. that we see associated in the research with low carb and keto diets that will help with our right. biological age. So uh, obviously weight loss, um, better sleep, um, improved cardiovascular markers, improved inflammatory markers, right. you know, the list goes on and on. Yeah, and, and you mentioned losing weight and actually it doesn't have to be a hugely significant amount of, of weight. I think what I saw was um, like even 10% Losing 10% of your body weight and keeping that off can uh, actually lengthen the, the telomeres. And we didn't actually mention that. I think actually, if you adopt a healthy lifestyle, you can make these telomeres longer. There's an enzyme that will produce them and, and can yeah. so lengthen them. So you, hopefully you can re reverse some of the damage that you've done if you've been leading a, yeah. you know, a questionable lifestyle yeah it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not it's not it's not hopeless you know it doesn't matter what your age is if you're you know 20 30 40 50 60 70 you can start to make changes and on a cellular level right um, so I, I do want to go over the uh, uh, this telomere testing because you can do that yeah now there's a That's company called SpectraCell. we will leave a link down there but uh, you can go online they have a test that you can buy uh, or get from your doctor, and then you can go on their site, and they have different draw sites uh, across the country. You can find one near you. They, you take the kit in, they draw the blood, and they take care of sending it all in, right? And then you get your results. Um, I don't know that I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just Why? I, well, I feel like I'm already not doing all the things I I not want. I, <laughs> I don't yeah, want I, to do. Yeah, I didn't follow that at all. Yeah. That, uh, like I've yeah. already, I, I'm doing, I'm doing what I want to do, and I don't feel like changing anything yeah. else at this point. Okay. No, you're doing a lot of, a lot of good things. Right, right. We'll just stick with those uh, biological uh, calculators on, online. Right. That they got so. A little bit, a little, I, I don't know if they're based on the most up-to-date scientific research, but. No, but they fun. are kind of interesting, yeah. So biological-age.com has one of those things. You fill out a short questionnaire and, uh, and it's basically all the lifestyle factors, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. No, so what? So we both did it. What? What did you end up with? I was nine years younger. You were nine years younger. Oh, I smoked. I smoked <laughs> you on that one. I was like twenty six, and I'm fifty two right now. So. Well, was, so I'm married to a twenty six year old. Yeah, well, that's not so. Good. That's not so bad. But but here's here's the caveat. Like the um, they are based on lifestyle 
factors. But when you got to the lifestyle factor of diet, they gave you three choices. It was vegetarian, lean meat, and I'll eat anything. So I'm, you know, I like none of them applied to me. What did, what did I you put? I picked meat because it was the I closest. Picked, I picked, I picked meat too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So where's a little bit of fudging, but I'm still going with it. I'm still yeah. going with it. Yeah. And that probably reflects the fact that there's no real research into other, you know, specific types yeah. of diets. Right? I actually kind of really quickly looked to see if any, yeah. I could find a biological It's a little, it's entertaining, but you know, yeah, it was the difference thing, right? It's like. Smoking, drinking, yeah. high stress, yeah. you know, poor sleep, you know, um, yep. all those, all those things um, play into that. So the better, the better you can live your life, the, the longer you can live your life. Yep. Do the right things, age well. Right. All right. Hey, I hope that helps you guys and I uh, hope you found that interesting. Thanks so much for joining us each week. We absolutely love working with you guys and hearing from you. Um, till next week. We will be back. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon and uh, you'll get notified when our next video comes Ding. out. <laughs> hey, come here, Maddie. Do you want a, do you want a dog biscuit? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Come here. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs>